Hi everyone, in this video we are going to discuss about few critical administrative tasks which we can perform with Azure Virtual Machine. If you want to go through the complete course, you can access it through our website. Link of website is given in the description. Now let's come back to the topic. In our previous video, we had created a virtual machine and if you want to see that, just come to search and type virtual machine here and virtual machine service is reflecting down here under services just go ahead and click on it and here we can see our virtual machine vm1 just go ahead and click on it first of all i will connect a remote session with this virtual machine for that i will click on connect select rdp here you can see public ip address is automatically mentioned if i want to connect to the private ip address i can click on this drop down you can see even private ip address is also listed but if i will try to connect to the private ip from my laptop using internet this connection will not happen because the scope of private ip address is only inside the virtual network so i will change it to the public ip address and then port number 3389 is mentioned which is rdp port go ahead and click on download rdp file click on it click on connect we have mentioned sanjay ka as an administrator account which is already reflecting here then mention your password and then click on ok click on yes once we are connected to our virtual machine click on start and then click on file explorer here we can see that currently there are two drives are available one is our c drive and second is our temporary storage c drive is our os disk where operating system is installed if i open it you can see program files folder is reflecting here as well as we can see windows folder is also here because in this drive operating system is installed if i want to come back to my azure portal just go ahead and minimize this virtual machine and here click on disk under disk section we can see one os disk is attached here so this is the disk name and the size of this os disk is 127 gb and the same os disk is reflecting as c drive where our operating system is installed other than c drive if i again click on this pc you can see one temporary storage is also attached here size of this temporary storage is 16 gb and the size is completely depend on what size we select for our virtual machine so for different size of virtual machine has different size of temporary storage allocated by the microsoft azure as its name suggests if we store anything inside this temporary storage it may lose even microsoft azure has given one warning here if i open this particular file you can read it warning this is a temporary disk any data stored on this drive is subject to loss and here is no way to recover it please do not use this disk for storing any personal or application data it means anything we store inside this temporary disk it may lose for example let's say i have stored some data inside this temporary disk and i stop my virtual machine and again if i start my virtual machine in this process data which is stored inside this temporary storage will be lost and there is no way to recover this data if i want i can attach additional data disk and also we can assign drive letters to these data disk here so currently we have two disk one is c drive second is d drive d drive is our temporary storage e drive is dvd drive let's say if i attach any data disk and i want to assign f drive that is very much possible and we will discuss about this process in storage module if i come back to my azure portal and click on overview here you can see there are multiple options available here through that we can perform some critical administrative task on our virtual machine let's say because of any reason i want to restart my virtual machine so for that reason this option is available restart i just need to click on restart here currently you can see the status of this virtual machine is running and once i restart this virtual machine it will ask me for the confirmation do you want to restart vm1 just go ahead and click on yes and here in notification we can see our virtual machine is restarting when i restart my virtual machine during this process the remote desktop session is also ended here because the remote computer is shutting down so just go ahead and click on ok and after some time the virtual machine has successfully restarted and status is showing running here once this virtual machine is restarted we can again establish a remote connectivity with this virtual machine just go ahead and close it then click on download rdb file click on it click on connect and mention your password and click on ok now i have successfully connected to my virtual machine again i will click on start click on file explorer and this time 
inside my temporary storage i want to create one file so just right click on it click on new and click on text document let's say i'm mentioning here demo and then type some random content here go ahead and click on save and close this one so inside my temporary storage i have created a file named as demo let's again go back to our azure portal minimize this and click on overview next to restart stop option is available so through this option we can stop our virtual machine but before stopping the virtual machine let's understand what exactly happens in the backend let's assume this is our azure region where we have deployed our virtual machine and the region name is central india inside this azure region Microsoft Azure has set up their data center. So let's assume this is a data center here and further inside this data center, Microsoft Azure has deployed a physical server. So this is our physical server here. This physical server also has physical component like physical RAM, physical CPU, physical hard disk and so on. Let me draw it here as well. So this is my physical RAM. This is my physical CPU and let's say this is my physical hard disk. On this physical server, hypervisor is installed and with the help of this hypervisor, physical resources can be virtualized into virtual resources. So let's say this is our hypervisor. Now when I created my Azure virtual machine from the Azure portal, let's assume this virtual machine is deployed inside this physical server. So this is my virtual machine here and the name of this virtual machine is VM1. To run this virtual machine, we need resources like RAM, CPU, storage and so on. And when I created a virtual machine, I had selected a size and through that size we wanted to assign two virtual CPU, 8 GB of RAM, one OS disk is also assigned and the size of this OS disk is 127 GB and based on our size, 16 GB temporary storage is also assigned with this particular virtual machine. Now next question is from where these compute and storage resources will assign to this virtual machine. As I mentioned earlier, this is my physical server and with this physical server, physical RAM, physical CPU and physical hard disk is also connected. Also in this physical server, we have installed a hypervisor and with the help of this hypervisor, we can extract our physical resources into virtual resources. It means 8 GB of virtual RAM is going to be assigned to this virtual machine and this virtual RAM is allocated from this physical RAM which is extracted by this hypervisor as a virtual resource. We can draw it accordingly. So from this physical RAM, hypervisor has extracted 8 GB of virtual RAM and this is allocated to my virtual machine. Similarly, with this virtual machine, we have let's say assigned two virtual CPU also and this virtual CPU is also extracted from this physical CPU with the help of hypervisor. Along with this, we have also seen that there are two disks attached to this virtual machine. The first disk is my OS disk and size of this OS disk is 127 GB and this particular piece of 127 GB is allocated from the Azure storage. So let's assume this is our Azure storage and from Azure storage one piece of 127 GB is allocated as OS disk to my virtual machine. Similarly one temporary storage is also allocated with this virtual machine and the size of this temporary storage is 16 GB. This piece of 16 GB is actually allocated from my physical hard disk which is connected to my physical server with the help of hypervisor. So this hypervisor extracted 16 GB of virtual storage from my local hard disk and allocated to this virtual machine as a temporary storage. Now whenever I stop my virtual machine, resources allocated with my virtual machine start deallocating. It means suppose I stop this virtual machine, in this case all of my virtual resources, those are allocated with this virtual machine, will remove from here except this OS disk. Let's understand it with the help of diagram. So this temporary storage will also be removed from here. Similarly, my virtual RAM and virtual CPU, this is also going to be removed from this virtual machine. Only OS disk will remain here because when I start my virtual machine again, so my virtual machine will boot from the same operating system disk. So whenever I stop my virtual machine, billing is also stopped, but still I have to pay for this OS disk because still I am using it with my virtual machine. Now let's move back to our portal. To stop my virtual machine, 
I can click on stop button. Click on it. It is asking me for the confirmation. Do you want to stop VM1? So go ahead and click on yes. As soon as I click on yes, you can see the notification here. Stopping virtual machine VM1. Also the remote connection which we had connected has been terminated. It will take couple of seconds. And once my virtual machine is stopped, you can check out the status here. Status is showing stopped. In bracket, it is mentioned deallocated. And deallocated means all of the allocated resources with this virtual machine has removed now. So as I mentioned, except OS disk, everything has been removed now. If I want to start this virtual machine again, I can click on start button now. Earlier it was disabled, but as soon as I stopped my virtual machine, this button has enabled. So go ahead and click on start. In notification, you can see my virtual machine is starting now. And once this virtual machine is started, you can see the status of this virtual machine is showing as running. If we understand it with the help of diagram, all of the resources has restored back now. But if you remember, we had created a file inside this temporary storage. But during this process, when we stopped our virtual machine, this temporary disk is also deleted. And during this process, the data which we had stored in this temporary disk is also deleted here. If you want to verify this, we have to connect again to our virtual machine. For that, I will come back to my portal, click on connect, click on download RDP file, launch it, click on connect, mention your password and then click on OK. Click on yes and now if I click on start here and then click on file explorer, click on this PC. So this is my temporary storage, click on it. And here you can see that our file has deleted now. And that is the reason Microsoft Azure has put a warning here. Now there is no way to recover this deleted data. This is one scenario when our data is deleted from the temporary storage. Similarly, other than this, there can be multiple scenarios in which our data can be deleted from the temporary storage. Let's take an example of another scenario. Suppose my virtual machine is running on a physical server and in that physical server, there is a hardware failure in the Microsoft Azure data center. To avoid interruption of service, my virtual machine can move to another physical server where resources are available, which can be allocated to my virtual machine to allow it to run successfully. Everything happens seamlessly in the backend. These are the concept of virtualization which empower our modern data centers. But in this overall scenario, my temporary storage, which was allocated from the local disk of the physical server will be completely lost because the physical server is down from where this temporary storage was extracted with the help of hypervisor. When my virtual machine moved to another physical server, a new piece of temporary storage is going to be assigned with my virtual machine which is extracted from the local hard disk of other physical server. Let's come back to our portal again and now we will discuss about the password reset. When we created a virtual machine, with this virtual machine we had also created an administrator username and the password. Let's say if we forget our password of this virtual machine, we can reset it with the help of this Azure portal. So currently I am on VM1 and from here we can scroll it down till bottom and under help we will find out an option called reset password. Just go ahead and click on it and here select reset password. Mention your username. So my username is Sanjay K. and then we can mention our new password. So I am giving a new password for this virtual machine. Confirm password again and then go ahead and click on update. In notification you can see that password is resetting. It will take some time and once password is resetted successfully then going forward we can connect with our new password with this virtual machine. So these were few critical administrative tasks which we can perform with our virtual machine. I hope these concepts are clear. See you in next video. Thank you.